Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, neighbors. Uh, it is Monday, the 19th of June, 2017, 7 p.m. Um, this meeting of the State and City Council is now in order, and would those of a like mind please join me for a flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, thank you, folks. Uh, let's see. Staff is here. Uh, Keith, is Mr. Ludwig going to be here tonight? Uh, Mr. Ludwig is in, uh, and Eugene, they're doing graduation, uh, so he's with his son celebrating the graduation. I guess he won't make it then. All Stop. right, thank you. Uh, let's see. Mr. Wally Lean is here, our land use. Council, and I see the police chief over there passing out paper and explaining something. So we'll go ahead. Additions to the agenda, um, none that I know of. Declaration of ex party contact, conflicts of interest, bias, none of those. Presentations, comments from the public. Um, Ms. Campbell and Ms. Newton, would you gals like to get up to like tell us where you're from and whatever you need to say? Thank you. Hi, I'm Melanie Newton. I'm the PTC president at Staten Elementary, and this is Adrienne Campbell. She's my vice president. Okay. And back in September, you graciously gave our school one of your city council grants. So we came today to present you with thank you cards signed by the school, as well as uh, some pictures of what we did with the money and some examples of the artwork that we did by hiring a local artist to come teach artwork to our students. And we had a little bit left over, so we used it to um, buy some new art supplies for the school so that they would have some more art things to do. So we wanted to come and present this to you and tell you thank you so much and the students really enjoyed learning so okay so thank you somebody take the pictures please all right the students sign that and it's them learning and just all right we brought our kids show you the perspective. Thank you. Oh, camera. All right. Okay, Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Anyone else that uh, needs to talk to the council at this time? Um, under comments from the public. Yes. Those of you that are here for that public hearing, we'd like to hold off on that. But, yeah. gentlemen from state and veterinary, that's what I'm calling it. I probably didn't get it right. I'm, I'm close, I think. Yeah. I'm Mike Reynolds. This is right. uh, Jeff Brubaker. We're the owner of veterinarians at State and Veterinary Hospital. And um, we ha would like to uh, propose a change to our, I don't know, we, we, we just finished construction. We'd like to propose a change to the council and uh, before we get our final approval from the city and get your blessings. Um, so I'm going to hand to you. stopped at the clinic this morning to ask if you were going to come down tonight. And I, I didn't get to. Okay. Our kids got in the way. That'll do it. Our 
proposed plans had a, had a fence, six foot high fence, running on that highlighted yellow section. Those are the approved plans. The appro those are the approved plans. So now that we've got the thing built, we're looking at it and says, well, this, this doesn't make any sense to, to put a fence up on both sides of the alley and then also on, you can see our, our neighbor's letter, it would, it would necessitate taking down about 12, 15 feet of established arborvita, which provides a privacy screen. <coughs> and I've got some pictures I can, on my phone, I can bring you the lot on the east side that has a new hospital on it uh, actually has a, a hedge running on it as well. It's just offset the property line a little more. Uh, Henry's been down and looked at it. He suggested we come here and I did yeah. and uh, present it to you. So what 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 we're asking for is uh, to make an exception to our approved plans, whether it be temporary or permanent. Um, Ed has signed a letter saying it's fine with him. That's our neighbor to the north on both lots. But Dan, let me go Dan, what uh, procedurally, how, how should we deal with this? Procedurally, the city council should not deal with this at yeah, all. It's a planning commission issue. Yeah. This, is, this is an issue to come before the planning commission to request an amendment to their previously approved plan. Okay. So that's what we need to do. All right. Um, this, this then becomes just comments from the public at this Ab point absolutely okay is that now what I've left out here and this is why Henry wanted us to come here I think the Planning Commission wants a thousand dollars for us to not put a fence up now that that sticks in our cross just a little bit seems sort of silly so we're just hoping for reasonable people to make reasonable decisions and thus far, we've, 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 met, we've been met with resistance from the Planning Commission. So if we need to go there, we can, but that, that's part of the uh, contention. Dan? Okay. Yes, uh, go ahead, please. Dan, is that, has this been before the Planning Commission already? Approximately a year and a half, half ago yeah. or so. Yeah. The veterinary hospital appeared I, before I, the Planning Commission received site plan approval. I was there for that, yeah. Right. But it has, but an, ap an application to amend the previous approval has not been submitted. So I think you guys need to start from there, don't they? That that is correct. So that's the bone of contention. Let's back up. So in order for them to put in a request to have a plan change, that's a thousand dollars. Is that the the fee system established by the city council is that an application that goes before the planning commission. The fee is $1,050. The way the fee system is set up is that the city keeps track of our costs, and what is not spent is returned to the applicant. For a simple amendment of a previously approved plan that does not involve engineering assistance uh, or anything like that, Chances are good that the fee returned to the applicant would be probably in the range of seven hundred to seven hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, were you aware of that? No. No. So, did you ask any? I guess I want to. How did you find out about the thousand dollar fee? Dan. Okay, and at that time. Dan did not explain that no, that Dan, at, at that time Dan was cut off in mid sentence during the telephone conversation okay. and was told no we're not doing that That's so therefore true. they did not hear the rest of the sentence because I don't talk when other people are talking at me okay uh -huh. now I Dan the first conversation was between you and I and I didn't cut you off well guys I think that there's a set procedure and we know that it does cost the city time to look at that but chances are you'll get a significant portion of it there I mean I don't know if this is a council 
thing. I think at this point you should talk to Dan and make the application yeah. with Dan with the understanding you're going to get probably 70% of your fee back because there's not much engineering involved. Mm -hmm. It does take time for the city staff, but I mean, is that not correct, Dan? That, that is correct. Yeah. I mean, we can't help you. Yeah. So I would encourage you to try the buy the what what it says, and then if you don't feel like you got um, the resolution that you would like, I, you're certainly welcome to come back to City Council and let us know that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I'll take that. Thank you. And so yeah, so the process you are you're, you're aware of what the process is to then yeah. go back before them. Okay. Thank yep. you. Mike, you want? You need the rest of these, or no? We're good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else that needs to talk to the council and this comments from the public? If not, let's go to a consent agenda. It has three items on it: a June 5th city council minutes, an acceptance of an abstract of election results dated May 16th of this year, and the CCRLS amendment to intergovernmental agreement. 2017-2018, I believe that is a library reference. It is, too. Okay, so. Mr. Mayor, I mean, we accept the consent of agenda as it written. Okay. A motion. Second. To accept the consent agenda and a second. Um, no discussion, so would all in favor please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, we'll declare the that motion passed and the consent agenda okay. All right. We are going into a public hearing now, and I've got something to read. It's for land use file number 1-02-17, application for subdivision at 1103 Shaft Road, Hayden Homes Incorporated. So, here we go. I have to read this. Good evening, my name is Hank Porter, Mayor of Staten, and I'll be <laughs> presiding over this hearing. This is the time and place set for the public hearing in the matter of land use file 1-02-17, an appeal of the Planning Commission's approval of an application for preliminary subdivision plan approval for 51 lots proposed on 13 acres of land at 1103 Shaft Road. The property is zoned medium density residential. The hearing is now open. Oregon land use law requires a statement be made to those in the tenants that covers certain matters relative to this case. That statement with all the information required to be presented under ORS 197.763 bracket 5 is printed and available at the back counter. If you have not yet received one of these forms, you should go get one and review it prior to presenting your testimony. If anyone has any questions regarding anything on the statement or objects to it not being read out loud, please raise those questions when it comes, it becomes your turn to speak during the hearing. At the back counter is the agenda for this evening's meeting which lays out the order in which people will be called on to speak. During the public hearing, the City Council's rules of procedure for land use public hearings and a brochure written to facilitate your participation in the public hearing. You're encouraged to obtain and read a copy of those documents as well. At this time, I'd ask the audience if there are any objections to the notice that was sent in this case. I hear none. To the jurisdiction of this body to hear and consider this case. I hear none. Are there any declarations of conflict of interest, ex parte contact, or bias by any members of this body? None. Uh, we are now ready for the staff introduction. Mr. Fleischman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. The issue before you tonight is a public hearing on an appeal by Hayden Homes regarding the Planning Commission's conditions of approval on their application to subdivide the property at 1103 Shaft Road. Um, I've got a couple of um, slides to uh, help you along. I'll show some of them, but then I think I'll save the others for during the staff report. Property is located. Uh, the property under appeal is is outlined in blue here. It is immediately adjacent to the State and Middle School. 
It has frontage on Shaft Road as well as on Kindle. Well, actually, it does technically does not have frontage on Kindle Way. This, but it will have access to Kindle Way by two new streets to be built. The the rights away for those new streets were established in a land partitioning that was recorded in December of 2016. The city of Staten owns the land between Kindle Way and the subject property and owns the land to the north of the subject property. Uh, the council will recall that you accepted this appeal at your May 15th meeting, not June 15th as is written in my staff report, um, and scheduled this public hearing as a de novo public hearing, which really means that you are not just looking at the issues on appeal, but looking at the entire application for subdivision. So with that in mind, unless anyone objects, I'd like the city council's record to include all of the written documentation that was submitted to the Planning Commission, uh, even though not all of that information has been provided to you in your packet. Um, so I, I think with that, I will will leave that. Uh, that is the introduction. And I will be back following the applicant's presentation to go through my staff report. OK, thank you, Dan. Um, the applicant's presentation. We have some folks from Hayden Homes here. OK. And do you need the picture up there, sir? Uh, it, it can remain. I, do, it I, or? do I need it up there? No, I don't, Mr. Mayor. I'll just turn the lights back on. Go ahead, please. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. For the record, my name is Mark Shipman. I'm a land use attorney uh, with Sawfield Griggs, 250 Church Street Southeast, Suite 200, Salem, Oregon, 97301. Here this evening on behalf of uh, Hayden Holmes, the applicant in this matter. Uh, first, um, I'd like to make sure that the information that we submitted at the uh, at your meeting in May is, is in the record as well. Uh, just as a procedural matter. Uh, second, I'd like to thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, I know that you weren't here for the May meeting, uh, but I'd like to thank the rest of the council for accepting the appeal. It gave the applicant time to meet with Marion County Public Works and to discuss options and to arrive at what we feel is a, is a, um, uh, a re realistic, uh, appropriate compromise on what the cross-section of Shaft Road uh, should uh, be like with respect to the required uh, conditions of approval. Uh, Dan didn't go into uh, the, the detail or the minutia with respect to what Marion County Public Works and what the applicant agreed to uh, as far as uh, what Shaft Road would look like, um, but that is contained uh, in detail in his staff reporter memo that he submitted to you for this evening. I don't have much more to, to state, uh, so I would respectfully request that you move to approve option one on page seven of the staff memo. Uh, approve the Hayden Home at, uh, Homes application and adopt the draft order as presented by Dan. Uh, and I'd be happy to address any questions from you at this time if you have any. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're going to stick around for the rest of this. Okay. I am. <laughs> if, if there are questions, they'll, you'll be here. I will be. Thank okay. you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Dan, staff report. Okay. Now we get into the yeah, so I'll, I'll get into some of the of the detail. I've got some additional drawings to share with you. So again, this this is the property. Uh, the photo that you see here is from March of 2014, and because um, there has been improvements in front of the state and middle school since that time, I've got a, a more recent aerial photo. Uh, here that shows that the driveway to State Middle School lines up with uh, Gardner Ave now uh, and that there is a right turn only exit from the State and Middle School close to the property line with the subject property that uh, was not in existence. Well, the, the driveway exit was there, but the whole 
the whole configuration of the middle school's property has been, been redone since this aerial photo was taken. The, the applicant has submitted a preliminary subdivision plan to divide the property into 51 sing lots, four single family detached housing, uh, construct the streets as is shown on this plan. As I said in my introduction, uh, access to the subdivision will be from Kindle Way on extensions of Meadowlark Drive and Eagle Street that were provided for when the property was partitioned. Those rights, those stubs of rights of way were dedicated with the partitioning. Uh, the rest of the streets would be dedicated once the um, subdivision is, is platted. The issues that were, that were raised that caused this appeal to be filed with the um, City Council were about uh, the improvements that are required to Shaft Road. Uh, when the applicants submitted their application, they included this diagram as their proposed improvements. Um, Shaft Road is a, uh, the frontage of Shaft Road along this property is currently not fully improved. Uh, there is no curb and gutter. Uh, there is a, I believe, five foot wide sidewalk um, along the frontage of the property, but there's no curb and gutter. The Shaft Road is designated as a minor arterial. The city's public works design standards call for a 50 foot wide uh, improvement uh, curb to curb that would include uh, no parking but two bicycle lanes, two travel lanes, and a center left turn lane uh, with an eight foot sidewalk. Um, that's what the design standards call for. This proposed drawing does not meet the design standards and so therefore the, there were conditions of approval that required an oops what happened here? <coughs> well, I probably just talked too long and put everybody to sleep. Um, well, that may be the end of the diagram, so we'll see if we get the computer back. Um, so there was a, a condition of approval to do frontage improvements conforming to the um, conforming to the plans for Shaft Road. The city, Shaft Road is a Marion County maintained street. The county maintains the ultimate jurisdiction of what takes place in the county right of way, the design of that, while they usually defer to the city's standards for the design, they have control over what takes place. They are the permitting authority for any work within the within the, Dan, are, within are we the gonna, street. Are we going to have any more pictures? Uh, I well, um, it, yeah. Oh, you know what? It could be that the battery died. That's probably what happened. Oh. Uh, we will, once I get the cord out, plug back in. I thought with the new laptop, I wouldn't need to worry about that. I just, I so. just really like this picture worth a thousand words thing. So the city, when, when the property on the east side of the middle school was proposed for development, oh. yeah, we'll get there. It's a miracle. Well, you need a map.
There we go. Um, it was determined that there could be some significant cost savings to the developer by adopting an alternate cross section than what's in the city's public works design standards. The reason for that is on the north side of Shaft Road are some large electric transmission poles. Pacific Power provided an estimate that it would cost $75,000 per pole to move those poles. To avoid moving the poles, we came up, the city and the county developed an alternate cross section that instead of an eight foot sidewalk and, a, and then a six foot bicycle lane in the traveled way, would get rid of the bicycle lane from the travel way, allowing the curb to be in front of where the poles are now, and in exchange have a 12-foot wide multi-use path. That is what was constructed on the east side of the middle school with the Wildlife Meadows subdivision that has now been platted. That is what has been planned and approved by Marion County along the frontage of the state and middle school and it is what the city would like to see at this location for uh, this property. And, let's, and I believe it was that, that design section once this, the applicant began talking with Marion County that probably resulted in one of the reasons for the appeal. Since that time, as Mr. Shipman said, the applicant and the county have come to an agreement on, on yet an alternate cross-section that would uh, still provide the 12-foot um, path, uh, provide for travel lanes and a, and a center refuge lane, uh, but would not involve um, any work on the, or it would not involve substantial work on the south side of the street. And uh, it is this cross section and design that, that I have up on the screen that Marion County and the applicant have come to an agreement on and that, um, that the city is in agreement also, as we'll be meeting the, the requirements for, for frontage improvements. There are a number of of other conditions of approval that the Planning Commission imposed. Um, some of those involve uh, redesign of the sewage system. Uh, the, proper, the, the original proposal from the applicant was for the property to connect to the existing sewer in Kindle Way. Uh, there is a sewer line in the northeast corner of the property with a manhole there and the city's sewer master plan calls for this property to be connected to the Mill Creek uh, sewer interceptor. Uh, so there's a condition of approval that the sewage be connected to the Mill Creek sewer interceptor. The city's water master plan calls for a water line uh, looping through here that was not provided in the original proposal. There's a condition of approval to um, connect to the, uh, a, I believe it's a 10 inch uh, water main from Shaft Road to loop into the system to provide greater connection for future development on Kindle Way. There's also a provision, a condition of approval based on the sewer master plan that the applicant uh, install a 12 inch sewer main connecting Shaft Road uh, to the existing Mill Creek sewer line as well as other numerous conditions of approval that the applicant hasn't objected to. Um, so, you know, I think with, with the agreement that's been reached on the, on the new cross section for Shaft Road, um, the recommendation from staff is to approve the, the revised uh, order of approval that staff has provided to you. It's got additional findings of fact in it uh, beyond what the Planning Commission had, and it references the, uh, the June revisions to the Shaft Road cross-section as, as are illustrated uh, on the screen in front of you. 
So rather than droning on any longer, I'll leave it at that and be available to answer any of your questions um, should you have any. Okay. Thank you, Jack. Hang on a second. We'll get the lights. Questions from the council? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Brian. Dan, so this is going to be a revision to the original approval from the Planning Commission, correct? When, when the City Council accepted the appeal and set a de novo hearing, you essentially took over gotcha. jurisdiction of gotcha. the project, of the application okay. from the Planning Commission. Okay. What does this do for continuity with the other trail that's existing on, to the east? The multi-use trail mm -hmm. that will be a continuation of that. That it's the same design as has been built in f for Wildlife Meadows okay. and has been approved for construction at the State and Middle School. Okay, thanks. Dan. I don't. I'll wait till they're done. There we go. Okay. Then, do I understand, maybe not, but do I understand the, po the point of contention is that left turn lane off Kindle? There, there were two issues raised by the applicant in their appeal. Okay. One was the left turn lane, which the Planning Commission required at the request of Marion County and that they have now agreed to do, okay. as is shown in this diagram. And the other was the extent of the other improvements, the, the cross-section of the improvements that would be required on Shaft Road, and they have come, again, come to an agreement as to what those should be. Okay. So it sounds like we found a solution to the major issues we had last time. Correct. And that it meets what's going on on Shaft Road right now in terms of, I'm looking at Wildlife Meadows and the middle school construction, and how it's perfectly integrated with that right now. Along the north side of Shaft Road, it will be perfectly integrated with what has been constructed at Wildlife Meadows and what has been approved at the middle school. Yes. Okay. Other questions from the council? Um, proponent's testimony. Um, opponent's testimony. Like Dan, where like would you it, like? It looks like you've got a hand well, raised. Well, okay. Um, Tell me if you like. A couple of, a couple of, of uh, our visitors this evening uh, wanted to talk about this. What, what, you know, where? Right here, the, or this is the opportunity. Gym? Okay. So proponents would um, be anybody who wants to speak in favor of the application. Opponents okay. are people who want to speak against yes, the yeah. application. And then there'll be an opportunity for anybody who wants to provide testimony that is neither in favor of or against. How about testimony, conceptual testimony? Dan? Ex existentials. Well, no, <laughs> just the, the, whole, the whole idea. Sorry, of it, just Which is back to the beginning. I know. Uh, let's try it. Ms. Ambrosek, would you, Inez, would you like to get up there and tell us what what we need to hear? Well, and your, ad, you your address, please. Pardon me? Your address, please. 1668 Eagle Street. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Um, I have uh, several major concerns, but one of them is the destruction of the Quail Run um, neighborhood. I, I feel like we have a very wonderful little neighborhood there. We know each other and we're, we uh, really appreciate that. Uh, 51 homes means probably 110 cars coming down Eagle, Kendall, Eagle, and Meadowlark trying to get out on, on Shaft Road. And right now, Shaft Road is busy enough that sometimes you have to wait there quite a while to get out there. And adding that many more cars the ones that are on the other side of the, the um, middle school 
are a big concern for me. And I, I, am, I have to say I'm very disappointed that people in the community never received any kind of notice to come and testify against this and talk about our concerns. We uh, kind of came across it after the deal was done and I feel like we aren't going to be able to have any kind of an effect on this, but I wanted to say this is how we feel about it, whether or not we can affect it at all. So. Thank you. I have a question for you, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes. <clears throat> so did you or your neighbors, when you moved in there, what did you think was going to happen with this piece of property that is zoned for building? Did that, you believe that it wasn't going to be built on? The last I heard was that there was a vote about it being um, annexed, and it was voted down. I never heard that it was annexed by the city and that there would be building on there and there would be building there without consideration for the neighborhood that was there and other road access like behind okay, or... So, so you didn't, my, the answer to my question is no, you did not think no, anyone was going to build there. No, yeah, I did okay. not. Thank you, Inez. Dan, can Chaff Road take the impact, of, the traffic impact? The applicant submitted a, traf a transportation impact assessment. The conclusion of the traffic engineer that prepared that assessment on behalf of the applicant was that the intersections that were looked at, which was Schaff and Gardner, Schaff and Kindle, Schaff and West Town, and Schaff and Wilco Golf Club, would all operate within the city's um, acceptable level of service. The city's transportation <coughs> planning consultant reviewed that work and concurred. The county, Marion County Public Works, reviewed that work and had concerns about the operation of the intersection at Shaft Road and Kindle Way. And as a result of those concerns came the condition of, re of approval that a left turn lane be provided for eastbound traffic on Shaft Road. And the applicant has now agreed to install, to construct that leftbound turn lane. In addition to that, it should be noted that because this property does not have frontage on Kindle Way and that the city owns the property between Kindle Way and the subject property and that the city will be developing the land in the back as a public park, the city of Staten will be making, making improvements to Kindle Way. Kindle Way is another road that is not fully improved. It will be fully improved after the city does the construction and there will be a um, for southbound traffic on Kindle Way coming out of Kindle onto Shaft there will be a left turn lane and a right turn lane. So that in, in will result in in, uh, in dealing with that some of that, that, that traffic? That will, yeah. re okay. that will result in reduced delays for traffic exiting Kindle onto Shaft and the left turn lane will reduce will the left turn lane for eastbound traffic on Shaft will reduce delays resulting from left turning traffic and provide a, a greater margin of safety. Also it should be noted that the improvements that have been done at Wildlife Meadows and have been approved to be done at the middle school and will be done as part of this proposal that you see in front of you will provide a left turn refuge lane, two way left turn refuge lane along the entire Shaft Road from Kindle Way to Oakmont Lane. Okay. That sounds like a pretty comprehensive Other, solution. Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. Other testimony? Uh, Ms. Hudson, Durrell, would you? Well, this wasn't part of what I intended to say, but it sounds like you've not considered the impact on Quail Run, Metal Arc, and 
and Eagle Street because those those two streets that come out to Kendall go straight through our subdivision and there's no nothing about anybody going west is going to come through for sure maybe they can get out easier and there's no traffic lights in that area there's already a lot of construction but at any rate I had things I really want to say number one I'm like Inez I was not aware that there was any construction even planned several years ago we had we had a petition and we stopped the annexation of the property that's now to be developed and because of that you know there's never been any signs up that it was going to be developed we've had a, a construction sign there for years for the development behind quail run but I understand that the only notice posted in our area at all is at the north end of Kendall well most of us don't have any reason to drive to north end of Kendall because it's a dead end street but at any rate I do have some things I really want to say I think you should have notified the residents of Quail Run since we had um, opposed before and we had gotten the petition passed and um, I think the agencies or the persons who approved all this construction have totally ignored the petition that we had and it stopped that development that petition was for the same reason that my neighbors and I now oppose this development it does not provide direct access to shaft road from the new development it's going to send it all down through our neighborhood and when we were petitioned before and protested we were told there will never and put that word in big capital letters and quotes never be an additional access in Staten onto Shaft Road so tell me how the development east of the middle school now manages to have direct access to Shaft Road that's double standard so without too much direct access to Shaft too much traffic court will enter and exit the development via Eagle or Meadowlark and they'll do that in an effort to avoid long lines at Kendall um, rumors told me that there will also be no foot traffic access directly to Shaft Road I don't know if that's true or not but if it is true and if there are children living in that development then that if those who walk to school are going to have to come all the way out of the development then go up Kendall and then go down to the school if there were direct access to Shaft Road, even a footpath, that would prevent the children having to make this long walk, especially in our beautiful, cold, wet Oregon winters. And you know that a lot of times there's going to be parents who feel the weather's bad enough they need to drive their children to school. More traffic. So that's going to be a real problem. And the only advantage that I see to not give direct access for automobiles or pedestrians to Shaft Road will probably go directly into the contractor's pocket. He'll save thousands of dollars by not having to build a road or a sidewalk and having to give up one or two lots for the access out. I strongly oppose the final approval to develop the subject property without access to Shaft Road, direct access. And please take into consideration the needs and the de desires of the Quail Run residents who have kept this culturally integrated neighborhood well maintained, neat, quiet, and peaceful for more than 20 years. Thank you. And I, for I don't know that I told you my name since, since Hank called me by name. I'm Darrell Hudson. I live on Eagle Street. Thank 1658 Eagle, right? Yes. <coughs> you got that. Thank you. Um, others, others in proponents or opponents' testimony. Hi, this. my name's uh, Nick Petitas. I live at 1633 Eagle Street. I have a concern with which direction is the uh, plumbing going to be? Uh, sewage systems? Is it coming directly out and coming down Eagle Street? Not unless it's a severe problem. Well, well, we'll see what. Even on very wet days, <clears throat> that uh, in front of the park on Eagle Street, the sewage system percolates up out of the ground there. 
uh, right out of the manhole. Oh, and so, so if there's going to be more sewage coming down that street, um, you know, what crap does, it goes downhill. So uh, anyway, somebody needs to take a look at that. Could and it's been happening for years. At Cell Park? Sanitary sewer or, or storm yes. sewer? Uh, whichever one's right in the middle of the road. Well, I'm not talking about the, the drainage in the street. I'm talking about the manhole cover. The water squirts straight up out of that six inches or more. And uh, somebody needs to take a look at that. And if they're going to be adding more homes, it's going to be a mess. So, not. Yeah, and then it floods down on the other end down there, um, on the west end of the neighborhood. Um, so that should be looked at as well. Um, I'm also upset the fact that you guys didn't uh, notify us in the neighborhood. Um, one other thing too is I have a granddaughter that lives in our house. Amongst all the other kids in the neighborhood, um, those cars are going to be blasting up and down that road. So if you're going to plan this, you might as well start planning on putting uh, some kind of speed bumps or something in there to slow people down because they're already going fast. Anyway, that's all I got to say. All right, thank you. Um, we can, Dan, we can direct those those uh, water sewer questions to the proper place when he when we see him again, right? Okay. All right. Thank you. Someone else. Come up, please. My name is Nick Henneman, and I live at 1608 Eagle Street, and I'm fairly new to the neighborhood. So, also have some concerns about the notice that was given. There was a sign put up at the south side of the um, of the develop, proposed development and it had information flyers in it, but you couldn't access it because you'd have to trespass in order to get onto the property and get those, that information. So it was a little disingenuous, was my feeling. Um, there was also concern, I, so I didn't know about this until a couple of days ago, uh, and I'm not here representing anybody, I'm a practicing attorney, but I'm not here representing anybody, just uh, one of the neighbors, and also bringing to the point that the, respon the responsibility of the Planning Commission and now this body's uh, responsibility is to look out for the good of the citizens of Staten and if the folks which predates my time here who put forward a petition not to develop that land and it was recognized uh, and now we're changing course uh, so that would be a little bit disappointing to say the least. Um, and I appreciate your service on here because these are never easy easy decisions to make given you have the potential of 51 new residents coming in and you have a neighborhood of, that's been well established and people who are adding value to the community and doing trying to do the right thing. Uh, these are my neighbors and a lot of folks who aren't here today also express concerns. Uh, one other and I'm, one other issue is with the throughway on Eagle Street and the other streets up in the neighborhood. Uh, I'm glad to see the turn lane is being accommodated, but also a little bit concerned where for the developer's desire to save $200,000, the decision has been made to deviate from moving those posts. And really the people in the city are relying on you to carry out the laws that are on the books so we don't have to come in every time something like this comes out uh, and follow through with that. They were put in there with well thought out uh, purpose to have a well planned city and to deviate from that would be also a little bit disappointing to say the least. Uh, especially as it's a cost savings to the developer and what's the benefit to the rest of the community seems a little return for the rest of the community. Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Fleshman, I'm looking at a Statesman Journal article and also a State and Mail article back in January. I was on the Planning Commission when this came up. We have
Yeah, close to that. I'm looking at several articles that are six months old now in the state and mail and the, also in the Planning Commission. What is the procedure for notices? We don't just put flyers on a piece of land. It's on the city website. It's posted at City Hall. I mean, I don't know, Dan, what do you, what, we let people know, don't we? This didn't come out of the blue. I, oh, sorry. State law requires that we mail notices to all property owners within 100 feet of the subject property. Our city code requires that we mail notices to all owners of property within 300 feet of the subject property and that was done in accordance with our code. In addition to that there is a sign that is posted on the property, there's notice that is placed in the city's website and there is a public notice put in the window of City Hall uh, over the front front door of the community center uh, and at the library. And it's in the papers. It, there, there's not a published notice in the paper. There may be an there article, article uh, in the paper, but um, <coughs> don't believe everything you read in the paper. That's uh, fair enough, uh, Councilman Cronquist. That, yes, it, I'm sure the legal minimums were met for doing a development. The legal minimums are, are one piece and as you're moving into putting in a new neighborhood, uh, good neighbors go beyond the legal minimums usually. Thank you. Well, one of the things that, I don't know that this will help, but a, a few years ago, uh, everyone else remembers exactly, but I don't. A few years ago, the state decided that cities didn't need to have votes on annexations in areas that were already abutting, contiguous, whatever, but uh, close enough to other city properties. You didn't need to you just do it. it was Senate Bill 1573. Okay, 1573. And so we did. And uh, uh, whether that's the whether that's the right approach or not, it's uh, it's it's what what's happening all over the state. Another comment, Mr. Please, can I interject something real quick here, Hank? Go ahead. Uh, another thing is, is before we annex this, we did hear testimony, quite a bit of testimony about the need for. Um, uh, people who grew up in this community that wanted to live in this community that didn't have housing to buy there were there were a lot of other considerations it just wasn't about letting a contractor build a house it was about the fact that there is no no housing to buy for people who have grown up here and want to raise their children here and are looking for places for homes to buy and so it, it, it's a hard decision to make. I, I understand that people, you know, would like to have their, their community remain the way that it was, but there's also an obligation to all citizens here. And and I like to think that we took all of that into into consideration when we did that. I'm very, very sorry that you feel that your voice wasn't heard. I would would certainly have liked to have heard it then. But again, I just want to let you know that this just was not a decision that was just made. There was um, thought uh, put into it and, and um, testimony brought forward about the need for it here in our community. The last thing that I didn't do is the decision isn't made yet as you're seeing the hearing this de novo uh, and you've got seven options here and I'd ask that you uh, follow the option number four deny the application and direct staff to modify the draft order accordingly uh, and if you don't do that at least continue the hearing until July 17th uh, to allow folks who haven't had a chance to offer testimony to do so uh, thank you appreciate it Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Yes, come on, come up, please. My name's Eric Wissman. I live at 1510 Metal Arc. Okay. And I think everyone did say that we wanted to be able to vote on annexations. That's why it was in our charter. And there was an opportunity here to put it up to vote so all the citizens of Staten could realize that they were building or putting a new subdivision. 
and that everyone could vote on it to see if we needed it. But that was not done. There was an opportunity to do that. There was that Senate bill that was passed. There was 32 cities in Oregon that had that in their charter. And with one Senate bill, it was denied. So I think the city, the people of Staten, that was their opportunity to realize that there was something being built or developed and had the opportunity to vote on it. Thank you. Thank you. Let me go off and digress for a second again. Mr. Lean, a couple of cities, in spite of that state law, went ahead and asked for votes on annexation, didn't they? I want to say Philomath and... Corvallis. And where? Corvallis. Corvallis. What happened, what happened to those... Wally, can you go to the microphone, please? If you would. Yeah, they're getting sued. Mr. Lean is our land use attorney, and we invite him to sessions like this. The um, Philomath, Corvallis, uh, I can't, I think there's another one, um, objected to the Senate bill and litigation ensued. The circuit court agreed with the Senate and against the cities and dispatched their petition and it is on appeal at this moment. Okay. So it's still good law um, until somebody tells us otherwise, which is the advice that I gave you when the matter of annexation came before you is that state law and we need to follow it and council agreed and that's why we went ahead with the annexation without referring it to a vote. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Wally. Uh, anyone else in this opponents, proponents, general testimony? <coughs> yes. Go ahead. Ms. Ambrosic. I'm, I'm sorry. I... Get up there close to that mic, would you please, Inez? Right. <laughs> It'll move. Uh, oh. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. I cannot see your last name. Priscilla Glidewell. Oh, okay. Uh, you mentioned something about people looking for homes, and I think um, for most of us, we don't have a problem with there being homes there in another neighborhood. We have a problem with it destroying the neighborhood that's there, with the extra traffic and maybe, uh, I, and I haven't checked into that, but the, the sewage and the drainage problems. And so it, it's, it's not so much new homes going there and the annexation, I don't have a problem with any of that. What I have a problem with is my street turning into a freeway. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Go ahead, please. Hi, I'm Jeff Ader, 1638 Eagle Street, and my concern is mainly a safety concern. The whole length of Shaft Road from First Street to uh, Wilco Road or Golf Club Road, there's one crosswalk by the middle school for everybody to go across safely. And with all the homes that are gonna be put in there, this one and the other one, how are all those kids supposed to get across the road safely? You know darn well they're not gonna walk all the way to the middle of the shaft road to cross, so. Is there any provisions for crosswalks or anything or? And also, the whole area down there in front of Ross, the turn lanes, none of them are marked with arrows, which way to turn or anything. People drive like from Bymark, clear down to the McDonald's thing to turn in. Uh, Chief Stevens can probably attest all the fender benders and there's been a girl hit on a bike there, a guy got hit crossing the street there, um, things like that. I don't know if any of that's been taken into consideration, so. I've personally seen probably in the years, I've lived there 24 years, probably three or four accidents, minor fender benders right there, people pulling in and out of Ross and just things. And you probably know that's a problem area. Yeah. So, and I agree with everything else everybody else said. All right, thank you. When, I guess the enduring problem with that whole shaft road area is that it's a county road that we only have, Chief, jump in on this if you want or can. Or. 
anyone else. We have kind of a limited ability to, to uh, do much with that without their approval and their willingness to fix or modify that. So, uh, yeah, if we could get them on board with, oh boy, widening, signaling, crosswalking that, that whole area, that'd, that'd really be something. Monorail, yeah. sir. Go ahead, please. Is there any reason why the county wasn't involved in that uh, decision or recommendations on they stuff were. when something like that goes in? If the city oh. can't do it, how come the county isn't uh, involved? Oh, they were. Uh, but, uh, Are they doing their job? Is the next question. Well, <laughs> Dan, what was uh, the level of involvement of the of the county in all this? Marion County Public Works and Marion County Planning Division are notified of every land use application that comes before the Planning Commission or is reviewed by staff and are asked to comment on it. In this case, Marion County Public Works provided extensive comments on the transportation impact analysis. The left turn lane was specifically requested by Marion County Public Works and was included in the Planning Commission's conditions of approval and has now been <laughs> agreed to by the by the applicant and Marion County Public Works will be involved in reviewing the final design of the improvements for which you have the conceptual drawings uh, in front of you. Hank? Yes. One of the reasons that we are back here tonight about this was because of concerns that uh, about traffic, about, I mean, you know, the sewers, the water, the traffic, the all of those. We do want to make sure that it's done as right as we have control over it on our end. And so that's why this negotiation with Marion County has been happening with the contractor, with the City Planning Commission. So we've been trying to, to impact this in any way that we can to make sure that um, whatever we have control over with, with making this as functional as we can happens. So. Yes, go ahead. Uh, you've got probably a hundred more homes going in between the two subdivisions no. that are on that side of Shaft Road. And how are all those people, they're going to be walking to Bymark, going to Ross, the kids are going to be going to McDonald's and stuff like that. And I don't worry about the adult part of it, it's more the kids, because I see what happens right now with the uh, pedestrian traffic, people at night, kids after school, going into the west town, the exit that's closest to Bymart and stuff, they have to cross the street there and they, they're doing it unsafely. Nobody that I know has got hit there. But, and that road is very busy. So eventually they're gonna have to do something because all the uh, businesses and stuff that people will go to on foot traffic are gonna have to physically cross that street. So. All right. Yes, please. Another voice. Good. My name is Joyce Ranke. I live on Card corner of Cardinal and Meadowlark, just one block, one house away from Kin uh, Kindle. Can, can we get your address, please, rather than just yes. the location? Yes, 2068. We have, we have to send you a letter at the end of this. Mm -hmm. 2068 Cardinal Avenue Southeast. I bought my house four years ago. I was told by the owners at that time that uh, I didn't have to worry about a lot of traffic or being noisy because the property that is now going to be 51 homes was under a petition that would have canceled out any chance of having homes built in that area, which appealed to me. I understand that that's probably a done deal already, but um, I do want to make two concerns. One of them, we are low density. I do not understand what mid density is. And that, can someone explain that, what, what that means as far as the homes going in there? Because that's what it's been zoned at. Mr. Fleischman. Mr. Fleischman, the difference between low and medium density, please. In the low density residential zone, the minimum allowable lot size is 8,000 square feet and only single-family homes are permitted. Mm -hmm. 
in the medium density zone, the minimum allowable lot size is 7,000 square feet. The code would allow a duplex to be built on a 7,000 square foot lot and it also allows in the medium density zone triplexes to be built if the lot has at least 10,500 square feet. Having said that about duplexes and triplexes, the application for this subdivision is only for single family detached homes and that's all that would be permitted to be built there. Okay, that's in written down somewhere that that is in, in the findings and the approval for this subdivision that it is single family detached homes. Okay. Um, I I'm not clear why we at the present time it, it sounds like that originally it was designed so that it would have access right onto Shaft Road, isn't that correct? That is not correct. Oh, that is not correct. It was never I thought the original that you showed earlier that uh, it was directly onto Shaft Road. I may be mistaken on that. The, the, oh, there it this is. is not that one, but the earlier that, one. That is the that is the plan that was submitted with the application, and there there is no direct vehicular access onto Shaft Road. Okay, and that can't be changed. Is that what you're saying? It the, has to come off, the, Kendall? The policies of the city are that there should not be additional vehicular access onto Shaft Road. And how was it allowed on the other development? The other development did not have another street to access. There was no street similar to Kendall Way already there. Mm -hmm. Because my main concern, and because I do live on Meadowlark, is the park that we have there right now. On days that they have ball games there, which are almost every night lately, uh, cars are parked all the way down in front of our street, all the way. There's kids running all over. There's a lot of traffic. If we're going to have cars coming off of the subdivision going down both Eagle and Meadowlark, it is a safety concern and it's a concern for the kids in our neighborhood that are already there plus all the ones that are going to be using the park from these 51 homes which undoubtedly will have children and my other concern was the same one Darrell mentioned with no access over to the school children are going to have to walk all the way around Kendall to get down to the school no matter if they live right next to it so um, Yes, I do have concerns, and I think they've been mentioned before, but we'd ask that you take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else or someone else? Not suggesting that we cut this off, but go ahead, please. Okay. I, I would think the county would probably need to be a little bit more involved in getting the road and, and stuff in shape for uh, and crosswalks and everything before they allow new developments and stuff like that. Uh, thank goodness the school happens to be on the same side of the road as this development or every one of those kids that live there would be crossing the street. So, uh, there's just so many kind of safety concerns in that area. And you'd know what I meant if you lived there. And I think most of these people have, in the neighborhood have seen pretty much what I've seen, so. Okay, all right. Thank you again. All right, someone else. If not, uh, can we move on to questions from the council? May I just play, make one point that has nothing to do okay. with no, no opposition. Go ahead. Um, but Come on, we're Jeff brought up the subject of the traffic. Jeff brought up the subject of the traffic and, and no crosswalks. I think that intersection of Quail Run, Shaft, and into Ross is an extremely dangerous intersection. Both children and adults walk that people from our whole subdivision walk that road to cross to go to Ross and Weimart. And it's just really difficult for them to get across that road. So if, maybe if the city could look at getting us a crosswalk there, it would be wonderful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Can I ask a quick question, Mayor? Yes. So Thanks. do we have any control at all, Dan, where a crosswalk is at on that road? We have influence as to where a crosswalk mm -hmm. is, but we do not have control. Mm -hmm. Control is in the hands of Marion County Public mm -hmm. Works. Okay. Uh, in my 11 years here, there have been probably three or four times where I know it's been brought to council the need for additional crosswalks on Shaft Road. So is there any um, process for the individuals who live there and have concerns about the crosswalks to go before Marion County Public Works to let them know of their concerns since yeah. they have the control over it? Well, I, I think that Marion County Public Works is hearing that tonight. Okay. Before we go to questions from the council on the agenda, Mr. Mayor, is the opportunity for testimony from governmental agencies. Yeah. I don't know whether Marion County Public Works is intending on testifying tonight, but they should be given that opportunity. Okay. Let's see if there's questions from governmental agencies. Marion County, are you here? We're here. Uh, you gentlemen want to, or people, gentlemen, there's one gentleman back here. Would you folks like to offer anything on this? Can you bring him forward? Huh? There's a lady too, okay. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Julia Yoravich. I am the Marion County Traffic Engineer. Oh, uh, my address is 5155 Silverton Road, Northeast, Salem, Oregon. Uh, so I am hearing the feedback on uh, the request for additional crosswalks on Chaff Road, that is something that our staff can look at. We've looked at that in the past. Uh, Marion County does have some criteria for the installation of uncontrolled crosswalks. So an uncontrolled crosswalk would be one that is not controlled by like a stop sign or a traffic signal. And uh, we do have criteria for the placement of those. Uh, it includes uh, things like the demand for crossing, uh, the ADT or the average daily traffic volume on the road, uh, proximity of the different land uses, so proximity of, re of a residential land use to like a commercial land use. So we are hearing that t tonight and tomorrow I will go to the office and we'll get a review started. Ma'am, would, <clears throat> would we don't have to then uh, make some kind of formal request uh, for this or? You know, in my office, if I get a phone call from a citizen who requests a crosswalk, that prompts our review. Okay, super. All right. Any questions for this wonderful Marion County? I, I do have business cards if anyone here wants to contact me directly. Okay. Okay, wonderful. So it's Marion County Traffic Engineer's Office, right? Is that? I uh, yes, I work for Marion County Traffic Engineering at okay. Public Works. All right. <coughs> okay. uh, I'll give you my card, and we can talk later. Okay. Are there any other governmental agencies? Here's okay. Good. Hi. Good evening, uh, John Rasmussen. I work with Julia at Marion County. And uh, Dan, I, I want to ask you if you could bring up that cross section again. There we go. Oh, sorry about that. Hold on. Yep, there we go. Okay, okay. Uh, gentleman had a concern about the, uh, the, the pedestrian traffic, and specifically the, the school age children. And um, what, what this cross section does not show is that there is an existing uh, I'm sorry, does it show that multi-use path on, on the uh, south side? Mm, yes, it does. Okay, so, so just want to point out and, and, uh, that there is a eight foot wide multi-use path on the south side. And let's say children that, that don't live, will not live in this new development, they can you know, progress eastward and then cross a gardener where there's a school crossing. And that's down by the middle school. Yes, correct. So I just wanted to point that out that, that although our negotiated cross section does not include um, a bike path on the, on the south side, uh, we do have that eight foot wide multi use path that can serve both bikes and pets. Yeah, and that's the only one along the whole length of Shaft Road. 
between the stoplight at First Street and Loco Road, right? No, not quite. Um, the uh, the multi-use path starts at um, at Ross, or I'm sorry, Roth is it? The grocery store? Yes. yes. He's talking about a crosswalk. No, I'm not talking about a crosswalk. No, he oh, is though. Oh, I'm sorry, the crosswalk. Yeah. Um, for the kids to get across right. the streets and, and stuff. Right. Well, crosswalks are they they could be needed, but it's not that simple to put in a what we call a mid-block crosswalk in there, because it, there is a uh, issue of driver expectation. But uh, Julie is going to address that, uh, you know, in time. Okay. So, yeah. So I uh, just wanted to clarify that um, although there's no bike lane, the the multi-use path is intended to serve bicycles and peds. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, any other governmental agencies uh, general testimony? Other questions from the public? Questions from the count? Go ahead. There's one thing that I think oh, no. maybe folks Come here, up, please. I think it's important for folks here to understand is you guys are getting this de novo, the ball's in your court, you can still make a decision on it, you can still make the conditions and that kind of thing. You know that well, but for everybody here to know the discussion has been, well, the decision's already made. Well, the decision isn't made. The application is still before you. And for folks here to understand that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate yes. your time. Okay. Uh, other questions from the council? How about an applicant summary? If we can move, can we move to that? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a lot of uh, the questions that were brought up by the neighbors, I think, have been answered either by uh, by Dan uh, Wally uh, and even um, uh, public work staff in this case. A couple of uh, additional points: uh, City code doesn't require that we install a direct pedestrian crossing uh, from the development onto Shaft Road. Staff's not required it in this case, and so I don't think it's appropriate for you to, to uh, require that in this instance. Um, the, the petition also, uh, while maybe applicable uh, years ago, is not applicable in this case. Um, Mr. Hem Hemming, I believe, uh, testified with respect to um, notice, and I think that uh, Dan addressed that. He also asked for the hearing to be continued uh, till July, and we don't think that's appropriate in this case. Um, the, uh, I, I believe that, that uh, those that were required to get notice in this case, and your notice is pretty, is pretty generous with uh, 300 feet. Uh, the property was posted with signage, uh, so as folks would be driving by, they would have been able to see. Uh, they would have been able to see that 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 signage. And, and Dan's already uh, noted, uh, let you know that that the, the property was properly posted and notice was uh, was properly sent out to the, to the property owners within the, the notification area. Um, and, and if anything, I would ask that you would you would close the hearing tonight. Uh, you take deliberations and make a decision. If you feel like you want to provide additional opportunity for the neighbors to present uh, testimony, then I would urge that you close the hearing this evening, not continue the hearing, uh, but allow for written comments uh, by the neighbors. And I think, Wally, we would do 7-7-7, seven, seven seven, uh, where we would allow uh, comments by, the, by, by the, uh, those that would be interested in making comments, seven days, uh, seven days for rebuttal, and then the final seven days with the applicant as we have the burden to prove. Um, Mike, and just in summary, we've satisfied all the mandatory approval criteria for this. The, the, the two key issues that we were, we were high centered on with Marion County was the, the, the left turn lane on Shaft heading eastbound and the cross section in that case. And we had to sit down and have hard discussions with Marion County over what that would look like. And both, both parties came to a compromise, which is, I, see, I think is something that you were, you were hoping that we'd be able to do, and we did that. Um, the, the criteria that staff have put forth, both, both the planning staff and your public works uh, that Lance has put forward, they're not easy. They're, they're difficult criteria. We're not asking for any variances. We're not, we're not asking for any adjustments in those criteria. My client is willing to put forward uh, all the improvements that are required under your code. Um, and so this is needed housing, um, and it's, it's, a, it's property that al allows for this development, and I would urge that you approve it uh, subject to your option one. Uh, happy to address any questions of the, of the council if you'd had any at this time. All right, thank you. Um, now, 
I have to keep things simple here. Uh, the, the main point of contention then is that left turn lane. That's it. Not, any, not, not anymore. Not anymore. No. No. They've it's reached agreement on that. All right, that's not a problem. Okay. Well, then let's move along. Uh, staff summary, Dan. All right, thank you. Um, I, before summarizing the staff recommendation and the conditions of approval, I want to respond to some of the questions or comments or testimony that, that came from the public. Um, that council didn't ask about uh, and, and therefore haven't been responded to or, or replied to. Um, there, there was uh, testimony about uh, foot traffic and the desirability that there be direct pedestrian access into the proposed subdivision from Shaft Road. One of the conditions of approval that the Planning Commission placed on the application and that staff is recommending to the City Council that you place on the um, application is that there be a pedestrian connection, eight foot wide sidewalk within a 20 foot wide dedicated tract along the west side of lot 12. It's hard to read on the screen, but lot 12 is the kind of triangular lot in the lower right corner of the diagram here that will provide a direct connect pedestrian connection between what's labeled uh, as street B <coughs> on this diagram and Shaft Road. Also, there is a recommended condition of approval that the developer um, coordinate with the North San Am School District to locate a direct pedestrian connection to the middle school. The school district has agreed to that and has made a suggested location for that, and, um, but, that but the exact location of that is not yet determined. Um, there is a separate condition of approval that deals with a standard in our code that is not met uh, about the maximum length of a block. Uh, our code says that in a residential zone, a block may not be any longer than 600 feet long. And this proposal the block length for that new interior block is 670 feet long. So there is a recommended condition of approval that the applicant has previously agreed to to provide a mid-block walkway through this block. So that will provide additional pedestrian connectivity. And while, again, the location of that mid-block walk has not been set, it would make sense to me for it to line up with the pedestrian connection to the middle school so that children on the west side of the subdivision or from Quail Run will have a more direct pedestrian connection to the school without having to go down to Shaft Road, even though there will be a 12-foot wide multi-use path there, but it'll be a more direct connection. Uh, there was a testimony about um, sewage and stormwater uh, on this diagram, you can see uh, on the upper right-hand side, there a, a dashed line that represents the existing Mill Creek sewer interception. There is a proposed condition of approval that contrary to the applicant's original design, that all of the sewage from this subdivision be connected to the Mill Creek sewer line. This is in the drainage basin of the Mill Creek sewer line. The applicant has agreed to that and the sewage plan will need to be redesigned from what was submitted to the city back in February. Um, Stormwater, the, the reason the city bought the 13 acres to the north of this property is to build a stormwater uh, detention basin. Uh, just so that everybody in the audience knows, there is current, today there is a 48-inch storm line on the south side of Shaft Road. 
that drains roughly a third of the city uh, and takes that stormwater to the west to the intersection of Wilco Road where it then empties out into an open swale and, and drains into the Salem Ditch. Uh, people may recall that a few years ago the city was sued by the Santa Ana Water Control District, the owner of the Salem Ditch, asking us to stop putting city stormwater into their ditch. One of the, so one of the reasons that the city has bought the 13 acres to the north is that water will be diverted out of that 48-inch pipe, sent across Shaft Road, the area that the city owns to the west of the proposed subdivision will, will direct the stormwater to a stormwater detention basin where it will pond up during the winter and slowly be discharged directly into Mill Creek instead of going into the Salem Ditch. This subdivision will drain into that new stormwater facility. There will be no stormwater from this subdivision that goes to the west of Kindle Way. Um, uh, there was question about lot sizes and, and the significance of the zoning as I explained before. The medium density zoning allows lots as small as 7,000 square feet whereas the low density zoning uh, requires lots of 8,000 square feet. This subdivision uh, the lots will range in size. The smallest is 7,261 square feet. The largest is 11,808 square feet. Um, the density of this parcel, when you take the 51 lots and divide that into the roughly 13 acres, is the same as in is, is almost the exact same density as far as houses per acre as the Phillips Estates subdivision which is in the low density zone. Because of the shape and size and the lack of access and uh, of this, you, you've got a number of lots that as I said are, are larger than 10,000 square feet. Uh, 38 of the 51 lots are larger than 8,000 square feet. Uh, the, I, I don't have the number in front of me, uh, but I believe that the, it, it's a, approximately 3.8 units per acre of gross land in the subdivision. Um, so that, that's the, the response to some of the testimony that was offered to you during the public hearing. Uh, the staff's recommendation is to close the public hearing, close the record, uh, begin your deliberations. We've put before you a draft order of approval with um, three, well actually two conditions. One of which is, the first one is broken into uh, seven, has seven subparts, so maybe it's eight conditions of approval. But uh, the first condition is that uh, the applicants submit engineered plans and supporting, supporting documentations for street improvements that conform to the city's standards uh, as a direct pedestrian connection to the school without having to go down to Shaft Road, even though there will be a 12-foot wide multi-use path there, but it'll be a more direct connection. Uh, there was a testimony about um, sewage and stormwater. Uh, on this diagram, you can see uh, on the upper right hand side there a, a dashed line that represents the existing Mill Creek sewer interception. There is a proposed condition of approval that contrary to the applicant's original design that all of the sewage from this subdivision be connected to the Mill Creek sewer line. This is in the drainage basin of the Mill Creek sewer line. The applicant has agreed to that and the sewage plan will need to be redesigned from what was submitted to the city back in February. Um, Stormwater, the, the reason the city bought the 13 acres to the north of this property is to build a stormwater 
uh, detention basin. Uh, just so that everybody in the audience knows, there is current today there is a 48 inch storm line on the south side of Shaft Road that drains roughly a third of the city uh, and takes that storm water to the west to the intersection of Wilco Road where it then empties out into an open swale and, and drains into the Salem Ditch. Uh, people may recall that a few years ago the city was sued by the Santa Ana Water Control District, the owner of the Salem Ditch, asking us to stop putting city stormwater into their ditch. One of the, so one of the reasons that the city has bought the 13 acres to the north is that water will be diverted out of that 48-inch pipe, sent across Shaft Road, the area that the city owns to the west of the proposed subdivision will will direct the storm water to a storm water detention basin where it will pond up during the winter and slowly be discharged directly into Mill Creek instead of going into the Salem ditch. This subdivision will drain into that new storm water facility. There will be no storm water from this subdivision that goes to the west of Kindle Way. Um, uh, there was question about lot sizes and, and the significance of the zoning as I explained before. The medium density zoning allows lots as small as 7,000 square feet whereas the low density zoning uh, requires lots of 8,000 square feet. This subdivision uh, the lots will range in size. The smallest is 7,261 square feet. The largest is 11,808 square feet. Um, the density of this parcel, when you take the 51 lots and divide that into the roughly 13 acres, is the same as in is, is almost the exact same density as far as houses per acre as the Phillips Estates subdivision which is in the low density zone. Because of the shape and size and the lack of access and uh, of this, you, you've got a number of lots that as I said are, are larger than 10,000 square feet. Uh, 38 of the 51 lots are larger than 8,000 square feet. Uh, the, I, I don't have the number in front of me, uh, but I believe that the, it, it's a, approximately 3.8 units per acre of gross land in the subdivision. Um, so that, that's the, the response to some of the testimony that was offered to you during the public hearing. Uh, the staff's recommendation is to close the public hearing, close the record, uh, begin your deliberations. We've put before you a draft order of approval with um, three, well actually two conditions. One of which is, the first one is broken into uh, seven, has seven subparts, so maybe it's eight conditions of approval. But uh, the first condition is that uh, the applicants submit engineered plans and supporting, supporting documentations for street improvements that conform to the city's standards. Uh, as, as I mentioned, that there be an eight foot wide concrete pedestrian walkway within a 20 foot dedicated track provided east of lot 12 to the proposed 12 foot wide shared path along Shaft Road. Coordinate with the school district for direct pedestrian connection to the middle school provide written documentation that Marion County Public Works has reviewed and approved the half street urban frontage improvements uh, uh, in accordance with the standards included in the June 8, 2017 email from Public Works um, that the water system plans be uh, designed uh, that there be a 10 inch public water main required east from the intersection of Kindle Way connected to the existing 10-inch water main 
that there be a utility easement provided for any mains or hydrants outside of the right of way, uh, that the sewer system be, as I mentioned, be uh, connected to the Mill Creek Sanitary Sewer Interceptor at the northeast corner of this property, and that a 12-inch uh, sanitary sewer system uh, be required from the property south to Shaft Road. The purpose of that is that it will eventually allow the city's Gardner Street lift station to be removed and this, the sewage from that part of town will all be directed up to the Mill Creek pump station, lift station. Uh, final stormwater analysis and report conforming to public work standards be submitted uh, and reviewed and approved by the city engineer. A stormwater operation and maintenance plan agreement uh, is required an erosion and sedimentation control plan and finally condition of approval number two is that the um, subdivision plan be revised to provide for that mid-block walk that I mentioned in discussing pedestrian connection um, that be at least a 10-foot wide walkway within a 15-foot dedicated tract east-west uh, through the block um, so uh, by imposing those conditions, uh, then you can make findings that all of the city's standards and criteria either have been or will be met. And, the, and we would do that by number one. You right? would you would do that by yes. The option provided in the staff report that would do that is the first option, which is to approve the application and adopt the draft order as presented. Mr. Mayor. No, no, no. We're going to close the hearing and go to council deliberation. Now, questions, thoughts? Mr. Mayor. Yes. I have a question for Dan, please. Go ahead. Dan, you referenced uh, two things uh, the condition of improvement. One was recommended condition of approval, <coughs> right? The, the, yes. Versus required condition of approval. Is that not what you said several that times? Is, that is cor cor correct. The, the conditions of approval that are in the draft order are recommended to you by your staff. I'm talking about to the applicant. Oh, they, if you include them in the order of approval, they are required of the That's applicant. That's what I'm getting at. Yes. I want to make sure we're being required and they, recommended. They, they, are, they, they say you are approved if you do this. Thank you. Yeah, right. All right. I want to make questions. sure that's. I yes. want to make sure it's crystal clear. Other questions under the del del council deliberation. You, you folks ready to go to a decision? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Alyssa, would you pull the council, please, no, on the yeah, question, or let's saying. get a uh, let's, let's get, get a motion. A move a motion, we, please. They move that we adopt it with the changes number one. Why would, well, would you say that, Dan? Your, your your city staff recommendation number one. What the the okay. Let's get what this, what the, what let's staff, get staff has provided council with seven different options. We have recommended option number one, which mm -hmm. is to approve the application and adopt the draft order as presented, including the changes. There are, that's there, the draft there are that's the draft, I have not heard that there are the any changes. Order. That's the draft. The draft order that you have before you. There have been no changes made to that that I've heard yet. But it had significant changes. But it is different than the Planning Commission's yep. order. Yes. So, Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the uh, the application, adopting the draft order as presented. Okay, so that's option number one for everyone. We've got a motion to approve the application, adopting the draft order as presented. The State and City Council approve the application of Hayden Homes for preliminary subdivision plan land use file number 1-02-17 and adopt the draft order presented by staff. That's the motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. I have a second. Uh, is there any other discussion? Okay. We're all in the clear on this, right? Okay. The sun shines. Alyssa, would you pull the council, please? Sure. Councilor Glidewell? Hey. Councilor Cronquist? Yes. Councilor Usselman? Yes. Councilor Neagle? Yes. Councilor Quigley? No. Motion passes four to one.
four one. Okay. All right. The um, the city's decision may be appealed to the Land Use Board of Appeals in accordance with the Oregon Revised Statutes 197.830. Thank you, folks, for your participation tonight. And there is no unfinished business. We're going to move along to new business. Resolution number 960, authorize, authorizing submittal of grant application to Bonneville Environmental Foundation. Mr. Fleischman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The issue before you is authorization of staff to apply for funds to the Bonneville Environmental Foundation to support the development of the city's stormwater system. Uh, we were just, well, I guess it's about 10 days ago, uh, notified of the possibility of this grant opportunity. Uh, we've had some initial discussions with the foundation. Um, they're not, uh, it, it's a, uh, shall we say, unusual grant process in that there's not really a formal application or an application deadline. Um, but uh, we thought that it was prudent to come before you and uh, request that you consider this resolution uh, authorizing us to pursue uh, this opportunity for some funding. Okay. All right. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Keith, do we have to approve each and every grant request? <laughs> because we, we I would like love you to. to get every grant you could possibly yeah. look for and find. For a general grant? And yeah. just, do a I mean, I love the information, but. I, I can understand the frustration. Uh, what this is 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 basically you're reconfirming that the city does want this. This isn't staff doing this, um, and it's generally kind of one of the general requirements or expectations just to to do that. So it is sort of a frustration. I get that to go through the motion, and I don't know if we can do a blanket. That may be a good question for an attorney. Just saying, if, if these grants you, you, come you in, really right. can't. You really right. need to be able to put into a grant request that the city council supports that request. That's that's the whole point in getting yeah, city council. I can safely say I would support any and every grant request <laughs> that's going to come before. For accept me, it would depend on how yes, much right. time it's going to take for. staff to apply for this grant. If this grant is Mr. Mayor, is I move odd, we, we just grab this thing and approve yeah. it. Okay. Oh. I have a question. Go ahead. Oh, so I've you said that this is a, this is a little different. That I so I'm going to assume that this is just an open uh, open piece of uh, uh, funding that you can apply for anytime you uh, kind of choose and there's not a specific RFP for it. When you said that it was odd the way that it goes, because there's several things. I mean, there, like there's the Ford Foundation has gone to that. A whole lot of places have gone to where there's no date. But when you said it's odd, does that mean the application procedure is different? Yes. It appears that there is not an application to submit. It is more of a give us a an outline and if we think that it's a good thing. Okay, we'll so a synopsis we'll and then we'll, we'll and then we'll, we'll ask for more information. More. Okay. And 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 my understanding is this is actually all corporate money and whoever the source of the money Microsoft is, does it that way too. Is going through <laughs> the foundation and is mm -hmm. just looking for the right fit. Right. Type you know you fit. know that Microsoft does that. Send a, send us a letter telling us what your idea is. Free money is good move money. And then if we're interested we'll let you know. I move we approve. I, I second. second. All right, I've got a motion to approve resolution number 960 authorizing submittal of a grant application to Bonneville Environmental Foundation. Is there any other discussion? I've got a motion and a second. Anything? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Charter Review Committee proposed changes. Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Richard, I appreciate you sticking around, uh, at least one person, so the pressure's on to, to entertain you and make sure I do this right. Uh, before you is a recommendation um, to, to update and charter review the charter as per the Charter Review Committee. On background, on February 6th, the State and City Council unanimously approved the establishment of a Charter Review Committee. The committee was uh, chaired by Nancy Boyer with the Middle Willamette Valley Council of Governments, or, or COG. Uh, we had 10 members of stakeholders that are listed in the packet. Uh, we met on three different occasions, April 11th, April 25th, and April 16th. 
Uh, in your packet are three documents. There's the red line version showing the proposed changes to the current charter. There's the working template, which is what the committee used to, to go off of. It provides what our current language is, provides the model of the LOC language, provides <coughs> notes based off the discussions, and then sort of a recommended changes. And finally, um, a resolution uh, to adopt this. If you do adopt this today, this will go in front of the voters for approval. That will be on November 7th of this year uh, in your packet, as well as a clean version of, of the charter as well. Um, I'll be happy to discuss the individual items. So I did invite the committee to be here. I don't think uh, anybody from the audience is, is here with only Richard left. Uh, I can say that safely. Uh, there was several members that, uh, that were part of the committee that are here tonight. Um, we can discuss that. Um, there are a few notable changes that I think I do want to uh, point out. Um, the annexation question came up tonight. Uh, that is still state law. Um, the com committee did decide to change it from currently any any one acre to three acres so that any annexation that exceeds three acres would have to go to the voters with the understanding that the state law could potentially trump that charter, <coughs> or could, tr could trump the conditions of our charter. Also, a another major change was that the mayor would go to a four-year term and then also the other council position, which is currently uh, set at two years for the lowest vote total would also move to a four-year term. The idea was to allow the council members uh, time to implement uh, their policy and to be engaged in the city um, for a longer term. Uh, the, there's some other notable changes in here. I'll be happy to discuss any of them if you'd like and be happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Any, any questions or thoughts at this time for Mr. Campbell on that one? Are you talking about any questions for the charter? Well, just yeah, yeah. For, the, for the process, yeah. for the Anything recommendations, for yeah. so section 29 on the mayor's nomination. Uh, we used to have to do a petition and have some people sign it, and now it says the council must adopt an ordinance prescribing the manner for a person to be nominated to run for mayor. We're trying to well, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. The thought there was try to eliminate the 10 signature piece because we thought that was. <laughs> I mean, anybody can get 10 signatures. Mm -hmm. So we're leaving that up to the council to determine how they wanted to handle that. By how, declaration or? Oh, how a mayor can run? Yes. How yeah. a, 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 so if someone wants to run right now, there's nowhere for them to look at how they're going to run for mayor. You have to go talk to the, the uh, deputy. Well, that, that she doesn't reporter. know either because it says that the city council right. has to come up with it. That's what we're saying. The city council to determine. I mean, we didn't think we should have it. It wasn't in writing currently. Correct. That's correct. And so, so what we want, all we're doing is just changing the method of. I would imagine if we put this out to voters, they would at the same time put together a draft right. policy for that, so that if we're going to put that into council that, rules or somewhere else, as far as we didn't feel it needed to be in the actual uh, charter itself. Gives us oh, a little okay. more flexibility. So you're gonna, okay. Got yeah. it. Okay. Because it does say currently a petition for must be signed by at least right. 10, 10 people. Yeah, right. 10 it's people. currently right. in our charter, so how to do it. Right. And this just makes gives us more flexibility in how we want to handle it. I just want to make sure if someone wanted to know how to run for mayor, they would be able to have a place to look that they could see. Sure. Sure. First, they started as a history teacher. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does the part about annexations, if we're going to have that, does that have to be in the charter? It, it doesn't have to be in the charter. The, it was a topic that was discussed at length um, during this process, and, and they decided they wanted to keep it in the charter with a recommended change just in case there was a change to state law or, as Wally pointed out, the legislation goes through or as the lawsuit goes through, if, there, if that's struck down in some way, that this would still be in place. We would have to go back and amend it. But you could adopt an ordinance or have something else instead of the charter that said? Yeah, I mean, the, the, obviously the charter has a little more, uh, it takes a little more authority, a little more time and consideration. Um, it's a higher hurdle, if you will. Um, but the committee decided they wanted to go ahead and leave that in, even understanding. Brian, do you have to agree with what I said uh, there? There's some discussion about removing it altogether, I think. Uh, yeah. At the end of the day, the consensus was let's pick on a number because a lot of people thought the one acre was too restrictive and it cost too much from our standpoint. The, you know, we were randomly throwing it out, and then Lance mentioned uh, the size of houses or the number of houses that can fit per acre, and, and Dan, or you weren't there, no, Lance was talking about it, and 
was giving different per, uh, perspective about how many houses go on what particular razor, and that's how the committee decided, yes, yeah, so let's leave it in there and event that um, it does survive the challenge, and if it doesn't survive the challenge, then obviously it's, it's null and void. Um, but we thought that one was restrictive and the happy medium was three. Yeah, because there were... There was, five, a, a, there was a yes. five thrown in and a three. Yeah, right. okay. So it's the understanding that we're only going to vote on annexations over three acres if the state law is struck down? Because I don't want people thinking we're going to vote on everything over three acres now and then... I think it would be, a, yeah, I see where you're going with this, that if we put this out in 2018, we'll have a whole audience of people out there hmm. quoting from the 2018 chart. Yeah, but you guys said... I think it makes that distinction, doesn't it? It says... Uh, there's this. Is there a reference to the state law? I thought yeah. there was. Yeah, there is. But good point. I mean, that's the, we 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 talked about that. I would yeah, just it, take it, it, out. it was it was definitely the the item that got I think mm -hmm. the most discussion and time for all and just all the points you sort of brought up. Because we could have an ordinance later that says we're going to do it for everything over three acres anyway. Well, I guess if if the state law is overturned and we take it out there is no annexation by the voters but we know that the charter committee said we wanted for everything over three acres and we could adopt an ordinance that says good. that good so if that law is overturned the city council can decide how they want to deal with whether yep. or not to take it to yep. Yep. it's a high bar to have to get all of the I, voters I, I agree we tried like i said there was there was discussion about removing it all together and the consensus was a couple of people wanted to leave it in, so. I, I think the idea would be that if the, the law does remain on the books, you know, being in the charter just gives it more weight and, and is a, like I said, I, I don't know if I hire hurdles, but you know, it's a, it's a more binding um, term than just kind of going off council who may change back and forth, more consistency, sure. I guess. That's just the argument that was given. Right. <clears throat> that annexation thing would have, probably would have been a good thing to leave alone, but got to keep stirring it up. Mm. Mr. Mayor? Yes. So if we want to get this on the November 7th, 2017 ballot, do we have to approve it today? I don't know. I, I think we brought it for, we're, we're getting sort of tight. Uh, the next, um, the next uh, consideration we'd have, because we do plan on canceling the July 3rd, so we can strike that from my comments from the city minister. We do plan on, on canceling that meeting, so it would be the July 17th, 17th meeting, just right off the yeah. top of my head. And I think the deadline is, is right towards the end of July, so that if we don't pass it tonight, we would need to, it would all need to be adopted. All, all we're doing is taking it to the voters. This, yeah, the, the resolution for you is to take yeah. it to the voters, but, it, but any consideration you want to make, it would need to be okay. done tonight or in their next council meeting. What would you folks like to do? To the voters. I move we take it to the voters. Well, it would go, it's going to do that anyway. I move we adopt it to the Okay. Yeah. So adopt resolution 962. Okay, so, all right, for the November. Keith was there. Pass it on to the November election, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, I've got a motion to approve uh, the Charter Review Committee proposed changes and uh, take that Charter Review to the voters on the November general election. That's basically it? Kind of? Uh, that's a uh, question. There's a second. Mr. Mayor, I, yes. I was going to ask if Keith was finished with uh, <coughs> highlighting the major changes to it. Um, I think there was one other one. Yeah, if you have something else you'd like to point out, please do. Uh, we were changing the, not the functions, we were changing the title of city administrator to city manager. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the big three that were really in the review process. Yeah. Well, it was going back and forth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was city administrator one and then mm -hmm. city manager and then uh, just mm -hmm. create yeah. more. Right. I'm kind of a little late to the game here, but with the as far as the annexation thing goes, I I, I think that uh, in trying to get something passed, there's enough of a group, a large enough group of people that are very vocal about that. That if we take it out of there completely, that it could render the rest of this document 
mill and void because I don't think that right. they would vote for it. So that's kind of where I'm at with I think that that compromise of leaving that in there, even though I, I think that's what our that's, that's, that's what, what your that's what feeling was. Yeah, yeah. As much as I'd like to make some differences there, I, I just really think that we're kind of asking to be targeted if we do that. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll second the motion, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Brian. I've got a motion and a second to um, pass that Charter Review Committee changes on to the voters in November. Is there any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Okay. Resolution number 962, City Fees and Charges. Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, for you, this is um, our yearly update to our adopted fees and charges for various city services. Um, I work with the staff to go through this and, and to make the recommended changes before you. Um, some of the changes are related to code changes that we made. I think riches, a lot of riches are, are directly in relation to that. Um, and also noting, uh, this was commented on last year, the SDCs, we do have it uh, in our policy to update based off of the CPI, the um, construction CPI, which means those adjustments in there as well. I'd be happy to answer any questions regarding this, and I have staff here to answer any specific other questions you may have. The review is done um, with the idea of trying to um, have the cost as best we can associated with what the actual cost of the process is. What would you folks like to do with this one? Mr. Mayor? Yes. I'd move to adopt resolution number 962 as presented. Second. I have a motion to, to approve resolution number 962, city fees and charges, as presented. I'll uh, second. Is there any other discussion, please? Mr. Mayor? Yes. I might have missed it, but um, how is the fee set at the pool, Keith? Is it in here? It's. it's um, it's not in here right now. What we're going to do is it's being worked on right now by by um, Billy, who has been hired to be pool director, and that's one we're going to have to bring back in okay. um, an upcoming one um, to establish. We did look at trying to get it done on this one, but okay. just didn't have the time yet to get it all done. Okay. Uh, let's go to a vote on this. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing no opposition, we'll declare that motion passed. Staff Commission reports uh, monthly finance department report. Um, see that it's there to look at. We're still sending hundreds of courtesy notices to landlords. Oh well. Some things just don't change. Well, we are implementing our new our new policies and changes, so I think over the coming months you'll see you'll see some that's, changes in this. That's going to partly fix that. Uh, well, well, we hope it will have some impact, yes. Good, 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 good response. I still don't understand why you have a problem with courtesy <laughs> notices to landlords. If I owned a home and people were renting it and they weren't, and they did, and they got their electricity turned off, I would appreciate to know about it. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have no way of knowing that they're living in my house with no electricity. Especially because usually you, the landlords are the to pay their the bills. Pay. You can't get your tenants to pay their bills. That's not your purview as a landlord. Oh. You want to get sued? <laughs> They just, oh boy, okay. You you don't have any control over your tenant and if they pay their bills. They, yeah. That's not gonna happen. They just turn the electricity and the water off. Okay. That's and then the way, you would want to know that your you property wanna, is in danger. That's the way you want to live. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> I, I think that you think that's something different than what it is, I guess, I, I is what I think. It may be, but it's, uh, it's nice to be able to complain about something, don't you think? <laughs> Let's choose something different. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Police Chief Support, Mr. Stevens. Mayor and Council, you have the statistical report uh, in front of you for the month of May. Uh, most things are in line uh, with previous months. The uh, exception is you'll see a large uh, jump on the juvenile abuse uh, section. Um, most of the, actually, uh, the majority of those are from one particular case uh, where we had seven, seven victims um, and th they were seven kids all under the age of 15 that were taken out of one home. Um, and then another one was, uh, was four, four kids uh, that were uh, 
uh, taken into uh, into care because they were involved in it and when their parent was involved in a DUI. So that's why those are, are jumped up so high. There were two, two cases that were the majority of those. Um, and the, the other thing I want to let you know is we did have our uh, annual um, fishing derby last week and we had over 42 kids that uh, showed up for that. So it was a great turnout even though it poured rain on them. So I think one, one kid caught a 27 inch fish and he was quite excited. So. Did you get a picture? Yes. All right. All right, we got that. Uh, Mr. Ludwig isn't here tonight. The Public Works Director's report is there. Um, planning and Development Director, Mr. Fleischer. You, you've got my uh, memo for activities in May. Um, I don't really have anything to add to that. We've got the TGM grant uh, submitted as of June 9th. The uh, Wildlife Meadows plat is finalized and approved. I actually saw a copy of the recorded plat today, finally, even though it took about two weeks for the county to get it up online. And um, that's about it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, library, Jenna? So you have my report and my statistics before you. This is our busy time of the year and I would encourage you to come sign up for summer reading and enjoy some of our summer programming. And does the Cupcake Wars involve eating cupcakes? It involves eating them after they do stuff with them. <laughs> so. Stuff that leaves They're. them still edible? I'm sure that their cupcakes are not going to get go home. I think that they'll get eaten while they're at the library. So. What, Jenna, what, that number of, of visitors to the library mm -hmm. last, was it in May? What, what number did you have for, it was so what, six, 7,000? This month, in the month of May, so not this month, in the month of May we had 6,533 patron visits to the library. Okay. How, how does that, how's that compare to a year ago or, or you know, whatever? So we're at 90.4% 90, 90 compared to last year. Okay. So we're, we're right on, okay. right on track. Yeah. Good. All right. Uh, questions or thoughts on any of these reports? I have a question of Jan. Go ahead, please. So who, who, can you tell me who's making the presentation, who lived there? Yeah, Carol Zukowski from, from the Heritage Society is making that presentation. And when is that one? July 13th. On the, yep, on when? July 13th. 13th, okay. State and historical houses and families that have lived there. I just wonder because nobody had interviewed me yet. <laughs> <laughs> or sure you what, either, right? It's, it's notable. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, uh, Priscilla, that she'll start with your house? I don't know. I'm going to go and Probably see. Probably not. The gardener house, I think, is the. I'm going to go and see if she knows anything about the. Oh, post. actually, no. Mark's house would be the first house. The which one? Mark's the Lau. house would be the. The Lau house would be the oldest house in town. The first house. The original part of it dates back to 1872. Really? Amazing. Okay. Uh, presentations, comments from the public? Nothing this time? Okay. Business from the City Administrator, Keith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've, I've mentioned that we, we will be canceling the, the Monday, July 3rd City Council meeting. Also wanted to announce that the city will begin accepting community grant applications starting July 1st. Um, grant requests are limited to a maximum of $1,000. Um, grants will be presented to the City Council on their second meeting in September. And the deadline to apply will be Monday, July 31st. We'll have information available on our website and we'll be contacting uh, people soon. We'll probably post something on our Facebook page as well to promote. We just wanted to get the word out about that. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. I don't have anything else this evening. Uh, business from the council. I have uh, one thing. Um, we are uh, some 
community members and I are working on opening an after school teen drop in center. Um, uh, plan to open in September when school starts back up uh, for high schoolers and middle schoolers. Uh, where we have a community wide meeting uh, set up for a week from tomorrow night at 6 30 at uh, Calvary Lutheran Church. Uh, with Pastor Sean, if you know that, and uh, we're asking for community members and teens also to come to that meeting to tell us what, if you had your choice of what a dream teen center, drop-in center looked like, what it would look like for you, what kind of services and what kind of uh, fun uh, that you think that uh, we should work on on it uh, to get it up and running in September. So we would love to have anybody that has any interest come to that meeting and uh, help us get it up and running by then. Okay, good, good idea. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Dr. Ryan, please. Yeah, you heard Councilor Glidewell mention the word community several times there. And so one of the things that's conspicuously absent out of all these reports for the last eight months has been the relocation of the community garden. So I'd like to know where the community garden is, Mr. Mayor. It's going to go across the creek. And when is that going to take place? Next year. So the people that were using the community garden up to this point are just displaced for what reason? That's probably pretty accurate. That is accurate. Has, have you actually had, a, had anybody ask you about it? In fact, I have. In huh. fact, uh, there's been postings about people complaining about their inability to use the community garden as what it's designed for. And some huh. of those people actually supplement their food supply by using the community garden. Some people I, I would the garage sale with income you, by stealing the food from us. Yeah. And how many complaints was there for food stealing? Do you know? I mean, there were several. How many of several? I don't know. I'm not the one. Right. There was it. one. So if we want to make discussions about reporting of crime in the park, is that a determination that changed the status of an existing well, I, park? I think that the new location will be a better location. It'll be a more secure location. I've looked at Lance's plans. I, I'm interested in where, where the uh, complaint has, because I haven't seen anything anywhere. Look, I've talked and to several I, people. What I'm getting at is we took an existing park structure that was designated as a community garden. And what standard do we use to change that use of that park? Yeah. Uh, what happened was. It was a park? The parks board are the ones who oversaw the community garden. I believe it's a park. How else would you classify it? Under what uh, would you classify it? I don't know. It sits under the parks. Bureau. So let me let me continue. What we did was we took no standard at all to change that designation of the park. What happened was a user group that had more clout and more weight took precedent over the using folks that were using that property. Okay, I talked to, uh, I thought almost everybody who had something there last year, and they were all okay with it. I didn't yeah, talk to one person the, that was The only member in this room who knows many other people yeah. who had community garden spaces, what we did is basically there's a year hiatus in the community garden and the plans yeah, for the next community place. garden have gotten that everybody was That was never discussed. We, we sat there and said we're going to find another location. In fact, we lied to the people we told we were going to get another location this year. Councilor, I don't know we ever said that. What I do know is that the people I talked to who were there, like me, with community garden spaces, who had a dog in that fight, um, are excited by what Lance's plans are and excited by the new location. They think it'll be more secure, it certainly more attractive. It doesn't take up for what took place this year. People are not able to use that thing as the city told them they were going to be. Well, it's a long-time community garden person and the only one here I'm willing to take the... What, what was the usage of the community garden? Do you know? Who? There were 15 total uh, whether... Who's the complaint? Who, compl who complained? It's not a complaint. I'm asking us what standard do we use to change property? But I want to know, I don't want to get, I don't want to get the uh, all excited about something that is, is a, is a non-issue. As I recall, there was... I talked to everybody that was you there. Talk, who, everybody that was where? That had, a, before I ever supported the this dog Park. I talked to the people okay. that had the community you're garden you're spaces. Point. My point was, how do we take one usage of a particular? Park I understand what you're that? saying, but that's, that's not asking. the way you started. I'm you started for, by I'm saying that you had standard. complaints. And I'm getting to it. Yes, there was a complaint. If you go on Facebook and look, people are saying, "Why are we using a dog park to supplement our food?" I'm yeah. saying people. I'm not going to get to that point. My but point nobody is, who wanna, was really here, using the garden. <laughs> Counselor, let's let's look at this. There was 26 oh, yeah. lots there, of which 17 stopped. We're 65% utilization. And of that, let's look at it. 
Let's, let's talk about the folks that were using that let's log. Let's talk about the income of let's the people who were using the log. Exactly. Let's talk about the income of the mm -hmm. people that are using it, mm -hmm. which I just told you they supplement their income for. And let's talk about the. I think you're wrong. Let's talk about the. Let's talk about the diversity of those folks that were using that. <coughs> Go and ask the, uh, ask Alyssa what their last names of those folks were, and let's talk about diversity. No, what no. I'm trying to get to, I, you, I'm, counsel, what, I'm they're not they're done yet. I'm not used, done. I, I'm what I'm getting to what? is, I want a standard. I'd like to see the city put a standard in place. So we cannot willy-nilly change the use of a part setting. That's what I'm getting at. I'm going to tell you that you're probably right. Most of them are Hispanic surnames. They're also the people who own Ixtapa. What difference does that make? I'm just telling you that you talked about submitting, supplementing um, their food pantry. These people were growing no, 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 organic raw peppers and very good. And they were also selling them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And yeah, they were growing terrific <laughs> again, stuff. You got. Okay. You we're missing the point. The point is, I, I would like the city to come point. again, come to the come to the council with something that prevents this from taking place in the future. Because it seemed to me it was sure was willy nilly enough to just snap our fingers and be done with it. Thank you. All right. Just remember the people we promised that we're gonna. Oh, we'll find a location. Oh, well, we will. <laughs> and we've got one actually. It's right. just gonna take till next year right. to get it. Councilor, I am looking at the state and Facebook side and the state and community side, the state and garage I'm done. Side. I'm I, done. I'm not seeing anybody complaining about there was, the I'm done. Garden. And then they may couldn't take it down. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about that specifically. I'm talking about how we change things. Well, so if I wanted to change, for example, the pool to be a fly fishing location, how prosperous is that? There's no standard to accept that or deny that. Well, it's green water now. That's my point. Okay. Are we done for the evening? We're done. Okay, let's go home. Good night. Thank you.